This is The Conjuring. Look what you made me do! A horror movie in which birds act stupid. And all oh, cool. A piñata. Wait. Piñatas don't do that. Not a piñata. Not a piñata. <gasps> This is Perchance to Dream, the 26th episode of Batman the Animated Series in which Bruce has tiny hands and hey, this is a dream. Inception. A dream. Welcome to Film Switch, where we take a movie we love, put it in conversation with something unlikely, and see what we learn. But the Joker cannot win. Today's theme. Preserving Benevolence. Our teachers, James Wan's The Conjuring and Boyd Kirkland's For Chance to Dream. We all know the story. Parents shot. Senses lost. Determined to prevent what happened to him from happening to anyone else, Bruce dresses like a bat and fights crime. He puts the weight of the city on his shoulders. Bruce Wayne became and continues to be Gotham's Atlas. While being selfless is good, look how hunched he is. His altruism looks more agonizing than gratifying, and one wouldn't be surprised if one day Bruce said, I'm done. No Gotham, no cow, just me. In fact, that is exactly what he does in Perchance to Dream. Huh? What the? Right. The Mad Hatter plugs Bruce into a machine that allows him to experience his ideal world. Its purpose is to create an ideal world for you. One might think Batman's ideal world would be one in which he had successfully rid Gotham of crime but it appears deep down Bruce's real wish is that he weren't Batman. Bruce's dream is to live in a world in which he has love, love wealth, a family, all you ever wanted, your own private wonderland. While Bruce's reaction at this moment is frustration, no! it was not his initial reaction. When he is first told by Dream Dr. Tompkins that he isn't Batman, it's called disassociation, Bruce. That all, all those these years, years of training and discipline. What happened to my parents? We're a, a delusion. delusion. He is relieved. The nightmare is over. And the relief makes sense. Finally, he can live a life without Gotham on his back. Finally, instead of being someone whose every deed has great value... You've identified with someone whose every deed has great value. Batman. Bruce can have himself to himself. I've never felt better in my life, sir. All this joy shows that lying deep within Gotham's atlas is a slumbering desire to stop being benevolent. He, of course, doesn't. He looks at the part of himself that wishes to forego his motherly instinct to protect Gotham... Your own private wonderland! ...and says... No! I won't live a lie! The Mad Hatter, the part of Bruce that wants him to stay in the dream world, tells him... There's no way out of this! But he finds a way out. You're wrong. There is a way out. He finds a way... Mr. Wayne! No! and jumps off the tower to escape because he recognizes that to stay alive in this dream world is to die and deprive the real world of Batman. However, before jumping, our hero did show a part of himself that wishes he weren't burdened with the responsibilities of being a hero. The nightmare is over. Pair perchance to dream with the conjuring and we see that all heroes, masked or not, have a hidden desire to stop being a benevolent Atlas. In Perchance to Dream, the Mad Hatter gives Bruce access to his ideal I world. was willing to give you whatever life you wanted! In The Conjuring, Carolyn Perrin is our Bruce Wayne, and her Mad Hatter, the being which tempts her with selfishness, is the demon- Bathsheba! Before Bathsheba, <sighs> Carolyn Perrin was a mother to five daughters. That's five lives she was helping shape. Carolyn was essentially the Batman, and therefore the atlas to her girls, but she seemed to love it. She was all smiles when they arrived at their new home. Even after one of her daughters tries to dampen the mood. Do I get to pick my own room or do I have no choice in that either? Well, first cute boy she meets, she'll 
Forget about Jersey. She showed a bit of hesitance at first. Can we play hide and clap? Hide and clap. But quickly joined her youngest in a game of hide and clap. Okay. okay. In a conversation with Lorraine, she reminisced on a beautiful day at the beach. It meant so much to me. I've never seen them so happy. They mean the world to me. She was kind of a dream mom, and yet... <laughs> She's the one who was possessed by Bathsheba. In fact, just about everyone Bathsheba had possessed is revealed to be a mother. I mean, it's no wonder they're going through what they are. It made its original body kill herself. It claimed her love to Satan and hung herself. And her seven-day-old baby. The baby was seven days old. Judson caught her sacrificing it in front of the fireplace. Its next body killed her son. Her last name's Walker. She lived there in the 30s. She had a boy named Rory who mysteriously disappeared in the woods. And then herself as well. And she killed herself in the cellar. These actions show Lorraine that Bathsheba's goal is to turn mothers into monsters. She possesses the mother to kill the child. That's what she does. Earlier you mentioned how Carolyn showed a little bit of hesitance before playing hide and clap with her daughter. Can we play hide and clap? Hide and clap. Oh, please? That hesitance is a seed of selfishness in Carolyn that Bathsheba takes advantage of. She possesses the mother to kill the child. It slowly amplifies her desire to abandon benevolence until she's willing to drop the world on her back <laughs> and let it die. <laughs> Bathsheba nearly convinces Carolyn that her altruism is pointless and her kids, herself, are better off dead. But then Lorraine swoops in and gets her Atlas to recall that day on the Remember beach. Remember what you showed me? To see the things she'll be leaving behind. Remember that day that you said you would never forget? If she lets Bathsheba take over. And Lorraine wins. You said they meant the world to you. This is what you'll be leaving behind. Carolyn is cleansed of the demon's influence and returns to her family. I'm so sorry. An ending that shows it is worth being an Atlas. I love you so much. Selflessness is exhausting. Oh, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm just gonna take a nap. And it can go unnoticed. Do I get to pick my own room or do I have no choice in that either? But being altruistic leads to moments like a beach day and a group hug. This seems like a happy ending. As the end quote states, diabolical forces like Bathsheba are eternal. By making Bathsheba an undying force as opposed to a mortal being, The Conjuring allows the demon to permeate the borders of the movie and become an antagonist in other media like Batman the Animated Series. Bruce's main villain in Perchance a Dream, and perhaps an underlying villain in every one of his stories, is not the Mad Hatter or Two-Face or Joker, it's Bathsheba, his subconscious desire to abandon Gotham and live for himself. Your own private wonderland! Combine The Conjuring and Perchance a Dream, and we see that every charitable person, whether it be a pointy-eared guy, mother of five, demonologist officer, every atlas faces an inner Bathsheba who whispers, abandon your community, your children, your life, relinquish responsibility, and have only yourself in mind. Don't let it win. Preserve benevolence by shifting focus from what makes being an Atlas agonizing to the beach days. The gratitude. The parts that make being an Atlas. Would you stay with me? I'm scared. the parts that make being an atlas gratifying. <laughs>